I was definitely not expecting a whole week to go by without me uploading a video that mostly had to do with me working and just when I get back being tired. I'm going to try to make that a less frequent thing. I really wanted to put something up before Halloween or, or at least on Halloween. I got a few more days off, so I'm going to try to make sure I work on something. The original Friday the 13th is not considered by a good chunk of fans, I'm not going to say majority, to be the best among the series. It's This is not like, you know, Halloween or Nightmare on Elm Street or Child's Play. The, the first installment is usually more remembered for what it began than for being some great, amazing film in and of itself. Now, I've never strayed away from the fact that my favorite two Friday the 13th are part four, the final chapter, and then part seven. But there's one aspect of part one that the sequels, unfortunately, will always lack. And that is the fact that Friday the 13th part one, the original film, probably has the single best character in the entire series as its main antagonist. Mrs. Voorhees, in less than 20 minutes of screen time, is able to completely eclipse damn near every single character introduced after the first installment in terms of personality, motivation, complexity. It, it's really just insane to think about. So throughout the movie, we, we don't actually see her. We see little glimpses, and that's one of the reasons why she's a twist villain in the classical sense, even if she's not physically shown in full until uh, going to see Alice. And her motivation is as follows. Her son drowned at that camp while the counselors were busy making love. And she believes the camp should be shut down because in her own words, there's been tr too much trouble here. One of the reasons that villains can be memorable is when they're distinct. You know, you look at Jason, you look at Michael, and even if you may like them as characters, you might like them for being you know, entertaining in their own ways. The silent killer angle is one that doesn't really allow for that much characterization. It doesn't really allow for a distinct personality. And with Mrs. Voorhees, she has that in spades where you give her this motivation that anyone who can put themselves in the position of either being a parent or a guardian or having lost a loved one, can theoretically sympathize with. And even if you could say, hey, you know what? There is something crazy about this lady. She's killing you know, innocent people in retaliation for the tragic passing of her son. You can still empathize with her belief system that she is, by doing this bad thing, Stopping something even worse from happening. You know, people mention that Jason does not kill kids. Well, you don't see uh, Mrs. Voorhees doing that either. And that's, uh, I guess, a trait that mother and son share, which is just a general hatred for teenagers and adults, I suppose. But you know, what sticks out to me the most about her, again, personality-wise, is just... People often talk about how mothers will do anything to protect their children. Um, at least that's like a basic stereotypical belief of a mother, you know, a mother's love, right? And even if I'm someone who, <laughs> let's just say, has not seen that come from my own, um, I can completely sympathize with the idea that someone would be either driven crazy or, you know, put in some extremely bad mental state uh, after a seemingly tragic passing of their offspring or, or just a family member in general. You know, I don't um, usually talk about personal stuff on here, but uh, over the course of the last seven years, I lost more people close to me than at any other point in my life. And uh, I can certainly tell a difference in terms of just what it was like when they were around versus now. And I think that with uh, Mrs. Voorhees, you can infer from her scenes, as brief as they are, that this was, you know, probably a lady that did have some underlying 
psychological issues, but at her core was just trying to do the right thing. And then when her son was taken from her in this very abrupt way, she felt it was unfair, that it shouldn't have happened, that it didn't need to happen, that the people who allowed it to happen needed to be punished in the same way that she felt she had been. And like I said, this is not to justify what she does, but it certainly uh, gives her a lot more characterization and credence than her son or really any other character in the series. You know, I did this video on why Freddy Krueger was scary. And as much as he may have this appearance that is, you know, very creepy just in terms of like just thinking about it and his powers are also menacing. Sometimes all it takes for someone to be genuinely terrifying is the appearance of being normal. You know, when you first see Mrs. Voorhees in her interactions with Alice, she appears to be this normal, well-to-do lady that is seemingly there to be her salvation. And that's one of the reasons why Alice runs up to her, mistaking her as a friend. And it's only as they're in the cabin and just speaking to each other, and of course, as they're later on having their encounter, that we see the <laughs> the, the wheels on the bus uh, break in pieces and snap and reveal what she actually is. And she, just from her appearance, you know, her son, of course, has the, the grotesque monster image that gets hid with all the different versions of the mask over the years. But just from her appearance, she's normal looking. She would appear to be any old person in the crowd, someone you might see at a bakery. She, you know, she might even remind you of your own mother or grandmother. Um, I would certainly say that her mannerisms prior to snapping definitely remind me of my, uh, both of my grandmas. They were um, wonderful human beings. Um, but that's the general idea that she's scary because she's normal. She looks like everybody else. In fact, she actually probably looks harmless, uh, which makes it all the more freaky when she snaps because it, it distorts our perceptions of what is not a danger to us and what is. So as I've rambled about Mrs. Voorhees, I've mentioned that she has a good motivation, good design. There are just two glaring issues with her character that drive me up the wall. One of them being that I really think the first Friday the 13th would be so much more memorable and, and, and might even possibly be my favorite film in the series if she just had more screen time, if they actually showed her throughout the film interacting with you know the people that were there and then had it as a twist they could just give her maybe two three scenes where she, we see her face and she's just working at the camp and i think that would have added to the twist and made it more shocking when she shows herself you know that that's just something that has more to do with the film versus you know her character even if her character's in the film but i digress and the other issue one that i want to scream to the heavens is her lack of usage in the overall series now out of Friday the 13th, Halloween, and Nightmare on Elm Street, the supposed big three 80s horror series. Friday the 13th has probably always been the one I like the least, and a lot of it has to do with the lack of recurring characters. Now, at first, when I mentioned that, I was talking about the different, you know, final girls that, whether they live or die, they, you never see them again, they have no impact on the story whatsoever after the movie that they're in. But with Mrs. Voorhees, it's so frustrating that you get this villain who she, it, her death, her passing in the first movie kicks off her son's supernatural reign of terror that goes on for years and years and years across multiple different continuities. And for some damn reason, for some reason that I cannot understand that baffles me, that leaves me again, just scratching my head. They thought it was a good idea to never bring her back properly. Now, again, the second movie, there's the hallucination with Ginny, right? And that's a nice little scene. And it kind of, you know, it makes the first and second films feel like they're more to do with each other. Uh, the third movie, right? The whole zombie corpse thing, which is whatever. But I'm talking about an actual resurrection. Like you established that Jason can come back time and time and time and time again. But his mom can't make a reappearance. And it, and it pisses me off because it's like the first movie sets up the foundation that Jason's mother is angry that he is deceased. In the second movie, Jason is upset that his mother was killed. And now, you know, he's a psychopath, or at least that's part of what makes him just willing to kill all these innocent people. 
And you never think to create a film where you have Mrs. Voorhees get resurrected. She sees what her son is doing, which is completely worse than anything she probably could have ever imagined. And they and, and, and not have a confrontation between them, some interaction. And look, this isn't like a Donald Pleasance right situation with Halloween where, you know, the actor passes. So whatever ideas you might have had for a sequel with him or some movie with him, you know, you just you can't do it. Betsy Palmer, who uh, passed away in uh, 2015, was alive and willing to act throughout the entire duration of the Friday the 13th series. That means you can go back and watch every single movie in this series, including up to the point of the reboot, although that was the one where I, I was okay with, you know, her not getting used. And they just never entertain the idea of giving her a proper second appearance. I mean, you know, besides mentioning the fact that in Freddy versus Jason, they have another actress player uh, because uh, they didn't want to pay Palmer the, you know, a, a decent amount of money, which is scummy. It, it's it's so insane to me that you have the perfect pitch for a film. The original, vi the original Friday the 13th villain versus her demonic offspring. And you just do nothing with it. And excuse me for this damn ice cream truck in the background. But you get the idea that like, you know, I don't pretend to be some good writer, some great writer to have ideas that no one's ever thought of. Empire actually, when they were ranking a uh, horror movie characters they put her i think as 90 something 92 or whatever and they said it was a shame that they wrote rather that she, it was a shame she doesn't she doesn't come back like her son does and she's more interesting than he is which i agree with but even if you and i'm not talking about having her take over for jason i'm not talking about doing a movie where it's just her and no jason i'm saying it's really unfortunate that you had the perfect opportunity to give her a, a proper appearance that could capitalize off the first movie tie it in with the sequels and even possibly give us one of the best installments in the series if you just keep her character, you know, like what she was in the first movie. And they never go through with it. It gets completely... The closest we get to anything like that is during production of Jason X, they were, gonna, they were thinking of having some scene where he would see her as one of the people in, in the simulation and he would, you know, attack her and that would be like just a sign of how evil he has become. But, you know, the, the, even something like that, I, I'd rather not just it, it's so sad that you have this talented actress with Betsy Palmer who played one of the most memorable characters in the series without a shadow of a doubt. And you never thought to use her again in an official proper reappearance. It drives me insane. And I know I'm busy with, you know, Halloween 666 or. Uh, whatever other working title I have for that sequel to um, to Revenge. But I would very much think it would be interesting to just explore, again, like a, a Friday the 13th where it's Jason and his mom actually. If they're not duking it out, then at the very least she's got some kind of moral dilemma of do I kill my son who I became evil for to save people, you know, other people from, you know, having the same thing happen to them or experiencing further tragedies? Or do I team up with him and just resign that this is what we are now? I think that could, that would make for a hell of a film. But what do I know? I'm not a screenwriter. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll be back.